This is my intro music. Welcome to the video. I hope you like it lots, so don't forget to subscribe and click the thumbs up button. Now let's react. Hey, hi, hello there, and welcome to another episode of An Anthropologist Watches Mr. Snowflakes, Amberlyn Reed, Shaped by the Algorithm. You know, I used to think that he had the Shaped by the Algorithm title for, for like, like an ongoing YouTube series, but... Uh, no, it's just for Amber. And it's taken me till this point, <laughs> till today, to figure that out. Um, let's see, I've been, I've been trying to remember to put the dates into my videos. So today is February the 21st, for those of you playing the home game. Um, I don't know how much that really is going to matter with these videos, because, I mean, other than it's showing you that this was published a year ago as of this recording so that kind of a thing anyway enough speculation all right before we get any further i am an anthropologist by training i have my bachelor's uh apparently i'm not being clear enough about that i apologize i don't mean to put on airs more than normal um i am a retired archaeologist of over 20 years those are my credentials credentialed and yeah that's it I like watching Mr. Snowflake. He's very thorough in his investigations. I feel like he's like, he's what I like to see when it comes to video historians as far as covering the YouTubes. So also his intros are amazing. So that's why we're watching these. We are, we have watched um, episodes one through four of the Shape by the Algorithm series. We are on episode five today. This is hopefully going to be a two-parter. I'm trying to keep these shorter just because it covers a lot of ground and I talk. So if you're new here, I talk a lot. <laughs> it's called a react for a reason. So yeah, so previously on the Shape by the Algorithm, we've gotten to the... Um, destiny era we are we are in the destiny era and I, have we done the cat yet yeah i think gracie was in the last episode so for those of you wondering now the the cat is a significant moment in this series the mr snowflakes series only because it's that point that you really see mr snowflakes attitude towards amber shift he's the first few videos in the series, he's very um, hopeful and upbeat, and he's trying to put a positive spin on Amber's life story as far as it's been on the internet. Um, but it's around that point that you really see that his attitude and his opinion of her has truly shifted. And that's fine. I just find it to be a really, it's a pivotal moment in the series, and it affects the series going forward. There's going to be another point much further down the line where his attitude towards her will shift again and it becomes an even more hostile point of view, which is fine. We're not... I. This is important to keep track of during this series. Basically, we're witnessing <laughs> Mr. Snowflake's villain, er, villain origin story here. Um, that doesn't make him... It doesn't make him unfair... It doesn't make him any more unfair than he... Uh, this is how I want to put that. He is a very fair and even presenter, even though I am fully aware of his opinion of Amber during this series. We have disagreements on the cat. Um, and the only reason why we disagree on the cat is because Destiny... I just need to remind people about this. Destiny even says Amber didn't do anything to the cat. Y'all need to stop. And that includes Mr. Snowflake. Um, but he is very adamant that Amber had something to do with Gracie's disappearance. Now, in his defense, going forward in this series, um, until Destiny did her tell-all uh, moments mid-last year, 2023, there, somebody blatantly asked her, they were like, did Amber get rid of your cat? And Destiny was like, no, Amber didn't have anything to do with it. So until that moment, we had no definitive like response from Destiny. So in this series going forward, 
we have to play off of that part. And he does. I don't know why I felt like I needed to spend that much time on the cat, but I do. I think my point is, is like, there are so many reasons not to like Amber. We don't need to make them up. Like, she, she does that on her own. She doesn't need help. She's got, she's got this, you guys. <laughs> All right, anyway, we're going to do the recap. I usually skip this, but since it has been so long since I've done one of these, I kind of need a refresher because I'm not entirely sure where we left off. And... So before I get into the video, thank you to everybody who's been supporting the channel. We just hit 3,800 followers. That's amazing. Thank you guys very much. Um, uh, so thank you to my supporters and my subscribers. Thank you to my members. Y'all rock. I will get the member um, cards at the end of the videos updated, hopefully by this video. And yeah, thank you to everybody who's going to hit the thumbs up button. And I think that's enough. I think that's enough preamble. So yeah, let's jump into this. I do have him sped up to time and a quarter, which makes him go a little faster, but it also, he sped her up in his react as well. So it does make her a little fast, but it doesn't really make her unintelligible. So I'm not going to slow it down unless there comes a point where it's like, I have no idea what's happening. And then we'll worry about it when that occurs. But until then, he sped up to time and a quarter as, as of now, because God forbid I do that before I start recording. There we go. Showing her naked pictures of me. I just feel like to blatantly tell me that this is not going to work out is kind of rude and very immature. I have such high hopes for this to work out. Is it? <laughs> tell me about rudeness and immaturity. All right, so here's the other thing that I need to stipulate because this might be somebody's first time watching me watch this. Um, we have to keep in mind that this Amber is Amber from the past. So this amber hasn't done all the things that modern amber has done but what we do want to do is we want to look at the behaviors and the attitude of this amber and we want to compare it to modern amber and see how things have shifted or changed or developed or not changed which is more usually the case up to this episode i should have done all this before sorry up to this episode we've been establishing amber's online character of Amberlynn. I talk about this a lot in the Dark Anthropology series and just in general when I do the anthropology breakdowns. Amber has a an image of herself in her head that she projects onto the internet and not like Anna from Glitter and Laser, she doesn't work so hard to curate that. However, she does try to maintain and correct or maintain and create that character to project towards her audience um so if you're someone that isn't following her religiously even through the boring moments like she's going through right now you will miss the subtleties of uh bad amber and all you see is like innocent help me out and i'm trying to lose weight amber and that's on purpose Right, so we're looking, especially when it comes to like the anthropological aspect of this, we're looking at how Amber is using her platform, using YouTube, using the trappings around her, the material culture around her, keeping in mind that the internet is material culture. I have a video on that as well. I should maybe link some of these things. We'll see. <laughs> that, that sounds like work. Anyway. We're looking at all of that and how Amber is creating Amber. Because online Amber, as much as we're all like, ah, we know what you're like in real life, this is not real life Amber. This is online Amber. Are the two of them fairly similar? I would wager yes, but uh, we can't be sure, I guess is my point. All we know is online Amber and all we know is what we see what she puts out towards us right now we're just looking at these series so i think i've done enough explain explanation on that it's been a minute since i've done one of these guys i apologize but yeah let's get into the rest of this video all right so did she break up and move in with first impression of meeting a few of her family necklace. members i completely fell in the mud my finger went into dog poop and you want to my bank account classic disappeared with no explanation our cat Okay. Got out last night. Disgusting creature. Excuse me? Aww. 
Sorry to pause it here. I guess he is going too fast for me. I apologize. Never mind. I slowed him back down to normal. cat. Our family is here and okay and perfect. Sorry. <laughs> He's like, Mom. Mom. Amber and Destiny were as much in love as you could be with a person you just met. <laughs> and their love was really coming through in Amber's vlog. I never liked Destiny. I still don't like Destiny. And... I've always said that, like, the Destiny era was probably when Amber was the happiest, only because Destiny allowed for such a level of immaturity because Destiny herself was immature and, like, that, that kind of crap. And yes, my cat scratched me. So, uh, it's just... It's uncomfortable to watch for me. Maybe not for everybody else, but for me, this is really, like... Why are you putting this out in public? It's like watching two people play tonsil hockey out in public. I'm not going to go up and tell them to stop. Obviously, they're having a good time. But, like, it's kind of weird. And it's uncomfortable. And so I walk away. Unfortunately, we're watching this. There's no walking away from this. Blogs. Amber, of course, had recently moved out of her ex-girlfriend's home and into a new apartment with Destiny. There was no arguing between the two, and there was plenty of love in the air. The pair couldn't have been happier, love, especially love, with the arrival love. of Amber's new kitten, Wasabi. Why do people do that to their cats? It's not like they're the only two people that do that. I've, I've seen people do that all the time on videos and shit. It's just... Their arms aren't meant to go that direction. They're, they're not people. Audiences were seeing Destiny way more than they ever saw Crystal. Although, perhaps they were starting to see a little too much. I don't need that. They celebrated their two-month anniversary together, which isn't a thing, and went out for a romantic <laughs> meal. Celebrated their two-month anniversary, which isn't a thing. I'm going to turn the closed captions on. Hopefully that won't be too bad. And their love for each other was evident even in public. Look okay. at... She wrote... I love you forever, and I wrote, no. I love you more forever. We're gonna get a tattoo. <laughs> I'm joking. God, aren't we glad they didn't? Actually, me and Jimmy celebrated 16 years of knowing each other today, and he wrote on my hand too. Buy, <laughs> Buy me more booze, word I can't say. No. Things couldn't have been going better. I actually had friends who celebrated their friend anniversaries. Like they I had two friends and they were friends with each other, obviously. And they had known each other for like decades. And they had a friend anniversary that they would have every year. And they would I mean they would celebrate it like an anniversary. Uh and I just thought that was a cool idea. Um I don't I don't think I do that with my best friend. Um because I'm a lame person. Sorry, friend. <laughs> they may have moved in with each other quickly and gotten a shared bank account quickly, but they yeah, weren't weird. slowing down. She's currently looking up how much does it cost to adopt babies in Florida. Other bullets that we dodged. Here is the infamous bra. If you are new to the Amberverse, uh, you may not know about this bra. Uh, it's an interesting... The bra itself... I know I'm spending a lot of time on this. The bra itself has a very interesting storyline in Amber's, in the Amberverse, and that's, um, she kept this bra for seven or eight years before she got rid of it. I'm not saying that, like, you can't keep a bra that long, but the condition of the bra dramatically goes downhill. Amber continues to wear it. It's clearly not being taken care of in a way that would allow a garment to be a nice piece of clothing for any length of time. And I think, <laughs> I'm putting a lot on this bra. I think the bra overall is kind of a testament to just the way Amber perceives things like items and possessions and that kind of stuff. Amber's all about 
what you see on the outside and doesn't really care as much about what's covered or can't be seen. We can relate that to her health where, yeah, we see her gaining weight. Yeah, she's currently like 500 pounds. She's been as high as six. So obviously that part we can see. But as far as like her internal health, Amber doesn't really take care of it. Now she will wash her hair and she'll put on makeup and she'll doll herself up and she'll put on fancy clothes. She loves buying new clothes, or at least she used to love buying new clothes and doing clothing hauls and just showing off her outfits. And there's nothing inherently wrong with any of that. But one thing Amber never ever did or ever mentioned doing uh, is buying like undergarments, which I don't expect. I really don't want people to like hold up their undergarments and be like, tee hee hee, look, I bought new, new undies. That's fine. And if you want to do that in, in a clothing haul, that's fine too. Just don't put them on and parade around in your underwear. I don't personally like watching that. Um, but we never hear her mention it, which I find to be odd. Even Anna from Glitter and Lasers mentions buying new undergarments. I think she did an entire haul of them one time too. Again, not going to watch it. But my point is, is that People who, people who are very careful about their appearance, their outward appearances, normally will make sure that the stuff underneath the clothing is also as presentable, or at least want to make sure that the audience thinks it's presentable. Amber never bothered to hide that. Amber just had this bra. She never changed this bra. She barely took care of this bra. It deteriorates over time on film like people tracked this bra this is a very famous bra <laughs> but that's kind of my point outward the things that you can see over the bra amber's very ca careful and cautious about most of the time but the bra itself she didn't care about because she didn't think people could really see it and when people started to noticeably start tracking the bra she got irritated and confused and didn't still didn't do anything about it because she didn't see the big deal about it anyway that's probably more about the bra than we needed to discuss but it's a metaphor it's a metaphor bra not that kind of onward wrong onward hmm i wonder what it would look like if amber and destiny adopted a baby dark but i'm sure we were all thinking it all right so this is actually <laughs> Ah, we didn't even make it 30 seconds. This is actually a really good example of what I was talking about earlier as far as Mr. Snowflake's like turn in attitude towards Amber. Also, this is very British. So if you haven't figured that part out, Mr. Snowflake is British. So for our friends across the pond, yeah. uh, I, I realize that this is actually kind of a joke, obviously. But and <laughs> British people have a very dark sense of humor that I adore. But also... I mean, like I mentioned earlier, it's a bullet we dodged. Okay. Amber wanted a girl and Destiny wanted a boy. And actually, through the power of the internet, we can see what Destiny's son would look like. Aww. They weren't going to adopt a baby tomorrow, but they were discussing doing it someday and the couple thought they would be able to handle a baby soon. But Amber wasn't great at looking after herself. She couldn't even look after a cat, never mind a baby. Amber was enjoying living on her own, as she put it, but she must have just meant living without parents, because she still lived with Destiny. If she did live completely on her own, then it's doubtful that she would be able to survive. After all, it was still Destiny doing the majority of the cooking and all of the jobs around the house. Whose dog was that? Was that the roommate's dog? There it is, you guys. Destiny finished it last night while I was laying in bed because I was trying to sleep, but the hammer wouldn't let me sleep. Amber is very... We've already established the Amber character, so we don't really have, need to go and like correct or change anything that we've been saying up to this point. But it's just now that we've established the character, we can start like filling the details out. And 
it's these kind of moments that she, again, puts on the internet. These are all videos from Amber's channel. Um, it's just her lack of appreciation and her entitlement does come through in these moments. Like, I was laying in bed trying to sleep, but the hammer... Destiny just built an entire piece of furniture. Granted, I understand. It probably wasn't... It, it's not like... <laughs> it's not like she, like, hand-laved the wooden planks and, you know, all of that shit. But she still did something that Amber wasn't going to do. And it's a piece of furniture that's going to go into their living space. So, in a way, it was kind of done for Amber. And Amber doesn't have the appreciation to be like, Cool, look at this new piece of furniture that I have. You know, it's <sighs> Destiny finished this piece of furniture last night while I was trying to sleep. I, don't get me wrong, I live with someone. We have slightly different sleep schedules. And when my partner is doing things that annoy me while I'm trying to sleep, I ha I have to remind myself that like, A, he's not, he's not doing it to annoy me. B, half the time he's like, cooking food that I'm going to eat, um, cleaning up the kitchen that I, in the house that I live in, you know, he's doing things for us. He might be doing them for his own purposes, but these are things that I'm going to benefit from as well. Amber doesn't seem to get that. And it's a, it's an interesting trait to see her have considering her background of not having a stable home life and being a foster kid that sounds like she got moved around a lot. I don't know how common that is in the foster system. I personally have never had to go through it and I didn't have friends who did. So I don't have any like first or secondary experience with any of that. Um, but I don't know. I just, where maybe another person would have learned to have some kind of like, uh, gratefulness for having a home and people who are interested in making that home with them. Amber is the exact opposite. Amber feels entitled to these things and feels entitled to have people doing things for her. And when they're not done in a way that Amber likes, Amber gets irritated by it. And I just have find that to be kind of an interesting development or an interesting trait for her to have cultivated given her background. When Amber was left to her own devices... Sorry about the sniffing. Well, it was pretty much what you would expect. I'm warming up some SpaghettiOs with meatballs. I just recently... Oh my god, I loved those things as a child. And good god, I tried some the other day. Don't. Don't eat your childhood favorite, t favorite meals. Just don't do it. Let yourself remember them as they were. Do not try to consume them as adults. We tried this like a month ago. I've never had a SpaghettiO product in like my life. And I did. And now there's no going back. It's so freaking good. So. No. I just put it in a bowl. Warm it up. Easy. Destiny may have done all of the grown up stuff on her own, but she also had a silly childish side as well. Often making. You know, actually, that's not a terrible statement. Um, Destiny did manage to live on her own. Because I. Was Destiny. I know Amber basically like ambushed Destiny as far as moving in with her because she did that with pretty much all of her, her exes. Um, was. God, I can't remember if Destiny was living with parents or not before they moved in together. But, you know, Destiny did have a full time job. Uh, Destiny did pay bills. Destiny was obviously capable of putting furniture and other things together. You saw Destiny cleaning, so Destiny had some sense of cleanliness or hygiene as far as like the house goes. So these are all adult traits. Destiny's overall personality is not one that I'm a fan of, but I didn't have to date her. So, you know, some people really like Destiny in the, in the Amberverse and some people are like me and they don't really like her. And then there's some people that are just like, eh, she's a person kind of a thing silly faces and random noises when on camera anyways <laughs> i wanted to end the vlog i wonder
of Destiny's like this when the camera's not on. Appropriately, we started. Mine wasn't good enough. <laughs> it was different. Okay. Amber found Destiny hilarious, and she th That's good, somebody had to. ...thought she was pretty funny herself, too. Hello, my friends. <laughs> but they never really did anything that funny. At least not on purpose, anyway. Amber's idea of being funny also consisted mainly of the silly faces and random noises. What kind of person, though, just makes silly noises and expects it to get a laugh? <laughs> Amber also I have no idea who that was. So like to do different accents when talking. We just uh, got off of work. We have to go to Walmart because Destiny wants to get some butter, some milk, and some syrup for her waffles. She can say milk correctly. <laughs> but it came across more annoying than funny. At least judging by the comments she would receive on her videos. It would have been a lot easier Back for her else. audience to connect or to relate to Amber if she would just stop the accents, noises, and of course, the screaming. <laughs> Do I have a grey hair? Oh! Ow! She does. Why does she do that? Amber was yet to come across as a real grown-up. She had no job, Crystal's parents were still unbelievably paying for her phone bill, and she had no real responsibility. This is 2015. Hello, bud. Okay, I'm just doing some stuff in my head. One of the criticisms that Amber has had in her new single era, because she's recently moved out of well, recently in the last six months, moved out of the apartment that she and wifey shared. She moved to Oklahoma to be closer to her mom, and she's living in her own apartment by herself. No one lives there with her. Um, and part of the single Lynn era has been Amber doesn't know how to do anything for herself. She doesn't, she, she mentioned she didn't know how to do laundry. Uh, in one video, she mentioned she doesn't know how to use her debit card. Like, she's never used her own debit card, apparently. According to Amber, every time she would go shopping with Destiny or Becky, she would have them use her card. So, um, what was the... Oh, recently she said she's never made rice by herself because she bought a rice cooker. And apparently it was the first time she'd ever made rice by herself in the rice cooker. And it's... I've had that model of rice cooker. It's it's idiot proof. So kind of kind of miss it to be perfectly frank. The Instapots are tricky, man. I love it. Will not trade it for anything, but it is it takes it's got a learning curve. Uh, anyway. What else was she saying? Oh, she doesn't know how to hang pictures. What else was there? Just a bunch of other like little things that people do without considering it being like an adult trait but amber claims she doesn't know how to do any of these things and she's very she infantilizes herself and it's really coming to the forefront while she's living by herself and some of the speculation is is that's how she attracts uh her girlfriends is that she she attracts women who want to like mother her or improve her or save her from herself that was very true with becky i don't know so much with destiny um wifey's motives are still up in the air though there is speculation that wifey was trying to save amber i don't know if, how much i buy that but a lot of people do think that's the reason um among other theories and it's and they're kind of speculating that that might be the new not girlfriend valentine's reason for trying to woo amber right now is because amber's very amber's really pushing the i i don't know how to adult storyline right now comparing that to what he's saying here from amber's videos from 2015 granted his video was a year ago this video is from 
that he's talking about is from 2015. I'm trying to keep the timeline straight. He's talking about how at this point in Amber's life, she wasn't paying her own bills. She wasn't making her own money. She, I mean, I, she was on Destiny's bank account. They had a shared account. And I mean, it's reasonable to assume that Amber wasn't paying her, wasn't herself paying any of the bills out of her own pocket. And like she, we saw Destiny cleaning the house. We've heard from Destiny about how Amber basically didn't do anything around the house, even though Amber does claim later that she did. You know, there's evidence to the contrary. <laughs> like, it's more, it's easier to believe the stories of Destiny and the other exes than it is to believe Amber's stories because there's basically documentation from Amber that Amber didn't do the stuff that she claims that she did. I guess my point is, is it's easy, it's, it's easy to believe that Amber really is this truly helpless as an adult. She's 33 now. She's 25, 27 here, somewhere in that range. I can't remember exactly. And she doesn't know how to adult. And I'm, I don't mean that ironically. I mean, she doesn't know how to have her own bank account pay her own bills she doesn't work a job i don't think is she even working part-time at the health care or the care facility yet and even then later on we find out that she's not like she wasn't like work working she was kind of like volunteering and then like part-time working she had a, do a job doing data entry that lasted for not like a week or so or something like that it wasn't very long and amber just quit even though she got hired i don't know to me, it's very interesting that, like, maturity, as far as the traits that you would expect to see in an adult, again, Destiny has all of these traits, even though Destiny acts like a five-year-old. Destiny is capable of taking care of herself. Amber is not. Okay? Apart from make sure Destiny's cat didn't run away, and we all know how that ended. I caught her and catched her. Even though the caught relationship was still her. in its early stages, Amber was extremely comfortable with Destiny, and perhaps she was a little too comfortable with her audience. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I just got out of the shower. Destiny and I took a shower together. I don't know if you guys can tell. I don't care about the other part of that. Her eyeliner is like perfect. Did she not wash her face? The pair were also spending a lot of time together. So much time together that some of Amber was beginning to rub off on Destiny. I'm on my period. The pair were inseparable and went everywhere together. I mean, that happens. Be being lesbians doesn't make that not happen. I would think, if anything, that would actually make it happen faster. They did everything together. The, the period sinking, in case no one knew what I was referring to. Sorry, when you have a group of women living together, they tend to, their periods tend to sink. And th there's been some really, there's been some very fascinating studies about that. There's tends to be like an, a, a dominant woman, and that's the one who everyone's cycle seems to sink around. So it's kind of fascinating, actually. Whether it was going to a restaurant, or heading to Target, or another restaurant, or back to Target, basically. Uh, they went to Walmart at least once. <sighs> Excuse you. Anywhere Destiny went. Amber followed. Apart from Destiny's work, of course. However, even that was about to change. Okay, so she's not up to this point working at the uh, care center yet. So, this was not expectant at all. As you guys know, I had a job interview. This was like expected over a week ago. And they never called me back. And I was expecting, like, them just not to call me. I thought maybe they didn't like me and they just acted like they did when I was there because they wanted to be nice and they were very nice people. But, um, <laughs> how do I ever... I don't know you're gonna wear because you have to wear like scrubs. Maybe. I don't have scrubs. She doesn't have scrubs. You can wear your black pants. I just don't know what kind of shirt you're gonna be wanting to wear. Okay, so today I'm going in. I'm being trained. Today is my first day. Like, I gotta call my dad. What the fuck? <laughs> Like freaking out, we're like, oh my gosh, it's really happening. Yeah. Usually they give you some warning, and I'm 
pretty sure Walmart sells scrubs. Why are you unprepared for this? Like, I've never had a job hire me within an hour, you know? Hey, would you like a job? Sure, can you show up in an hour? Like, I, I've had some pretty fast hires as far as, like, the jobs that I've done, like, but they almost always give you at least 20, especially since most of the time I had to, like, drive to the job, they usually give you at least 20 to 48 hours. Like, that's plenty of time to go to Walmart and buy scrubs. And she's not even that big yet, so it's not like Walmart or someplace similar wouldn't have had scrubs in her size. She can still shop off the rack right now. So, I don't understand what's happening here. Like, why are they acting like this is a surprise? Yes, Amber had a job. After months of searching high and low, well, mainly searching at Walmart, Amber now had a job. She had found a job working at the same place as Destiny, as a personal care assistant. This was exactly what Amber needed to be more independent and just a little more grown up. I cannot imagine having Amber as my personal care assistant, or I can't imagine Amber taking care of someone in my family. I would not, I personally would not be comfortable. And that's like not even as someone who's watched Amber's content and be like, wait a minute, you're that YouTube girl. That, I mean, like, she shows up and she's like, hey, I'm your personal care assistant. I'm like, if my, for example, mother, she does not need help like this, by the way, but if she were to fall, my mother weighs 120 pounds, maybe, soaking wet. Like, I don't trust Amber to be able to pick my mom up. Or to even help my mom get up. I'm not saying she needs to, like, deadlift my mom. But, like, I just can't imagine Amber having the strength or even the wherewithal to know to help my mom up off the floor. Do you guys get what I'm saying? Again, my mother doesn't need, doesn't need care. But if she did, this would not be the person I would be comfortable with taking care of my mother. Some responsibility surely would have been good for her. Although many found it strange, the idea of Amber looking after someone else when she struggled to look after herself. This was her chance to show her audience she could do this job and do it well. But there was one big problem. I'm very used to being not doing much during the day as you guys saw that and they need someone who's fast on her feet and I don't really consider myself fast on my feet so I'm gonna at least she's honest. Let's give her points for that. I push myself the hardest I can. Amber admitted herself she wasn't exactly fast on her feet, and when she did her first shift, her years of laziness hadn't exactly prepared her. So it's 1.05 a.m. I just got off of work, came home, ate something. I am so exhausted. My feet are aching like hell. My legs hurt really bad. My first... Amber also went on to say that her weight really couldn't have been helping her, but at least moving around all day at work would have helped her with her weight. I feel her here. One of my first jobs out of high school was working in a hospital, not the cafeteria, but the back room where they prepared the food. And what my shift was from like 3 or 4 a.m. until like 11 p.m. something like that i tried but some people myself included are just not cut out for that i tell you what though the other people that work there never had a problem with the people who worked there they were happy they were go lucky even the woman when she corrected me because you know I, I was there for about two weeks before i was just like dude i can't um also it was very fast-paced you would because they on top of preparing all the meals for the hospital they also prepared meals for uh like the meal delivery service that went out and delivered meals to like people who were shut-ins or just elderly folk um so there it was fast there was no downtime dude when i would <laughs> that first week when i took my break i was just like i'm dead i'm just dead and when i would come home that I would just, you wouldn't see me again until it was time to get up for my next shift. It was, it was hell. But those people, man, they had the best attitudes and they were very friendly folks, at least at work. I mean, I'm, I have no idea what they were like at home, but at work, they were very friendly. The woman who would, was training me and would correct me when I messed up, you know, she was very friendly about it. You know, they never, 
they never treated me badly or anything like that. I just literally could not handle the the pace and I couldn't handle the hours. The hours killed me. So I understand what she's saying. Oh, and you were on your feet the entire time. The entire time. Except when you took your breaks. So, like, I get her. Not everyone's cut out for this stuff. And the people who are, like, they are champions, man. It wouldn't be enough on its own, though. Especially if Amber kept eating McDonald's and Taco Bell and everything else she would regularly eat. Despite being in pain and exhausted from work, Amber did seem to really enjoy it. Yeah, someone at work today is like, you look like an Indian princess. I'm like, okay. I can't even tell you how many compliments I get all the time at work. All the compliments I get all the time. This is another trait of Amber that gets established fairly early. And I guess here we're seeing it actually get solidified because she's has she's having to work in the public at this point. And it's that whole like, everybody hits on me. Everybody thinks I'm a princess. Everybody compliments me all the time. Like it, you never hear Amber have any negative experiences with the public. It's always people tell me I'm pretty. People say they like my outfit. Any guy, any guy is always hitting on her. Doesn't matter. It's, it's an interesting trait to see her have and it's interesting to see it at play in 2015 i guess is my point like we've we've seen this we didn't really see it so much with crystal but that's only because she didn't work when she was with crystal so she her interactions only her interactions with the public only happened if she was with crystal and crystal's family like here she's actually in a workplace setting and she has to interact with the clientele of the workplace. So this is a different setting for her than before. So having her do this whole like, I get so many, I can't tell you how many compliments I get. That kind of a thing. It's interesting to see that come into play this early on. Amber had been getting negative comments on her channel for a while now about not working and sponging off Crystal and now Destiny. But surely now she had a job, no one could say anything. You will never get a real job. People are not going to hire someone as big as you are. It is too much of a liability. First of all, I do have a job. It is not a liability for somebody my size to have a job because people my size do need jobs. Companies are not going to discriminate against that. And if they do, then that is against the law. That is illegal to discriminate against anybody. I don't think she's right here as far as the discrimination part is i mean people need jobs so you know but i first off i'm used to living in states that are at will so they don't have to tell you why they didn't hire you and they can just fire your ass whenever but it also allows you to leave the job like you can't be put into like a contract uh kind of position but i'm, I'm used to living in states like that um as far as like the discrimination part of it i think new york as of last year is the only state that has a law that protects you from being discriminated against because of your size so also you'd have to know that they a didn't hire you or b fired you because you were fat which is probably not something they're going to tell you because they don't want to get sued <laughs> you know when you don't get hired because of discriminatory reasons or you get fired because of discriminatory reasons is that the right word i don't know um it's not like they tell you that you know <laughs> I have only had one job that I applied for and was told, no, we don't hire women. And I didn't do anything about it because I was like, you know, I don't really want to work for you anyway. Like, if that's your attitude, I don't want to work for you kind of a thing. Like, there are other jobs that I could be doing. Um, so there's that. But yeah, I've literally in my life have only had one company tell me they would not hire me because they don't hire women. I've suspected I haven't gotten jobs before because of my gender, but... That's pretty much it. You can't prove it, so there's nothing you can do about it. I feel like the weight thing would be the same kind of thing. Like, if for some reason they hadn't hired her because she was so big, I think she's like pushing 400 here. Um, I doubt seriously they would have said that to her. People who are in wheelchairs or handicapped in any sort of way should get the privilege and the opportunity to work in a workplace just like anybody else. I am not handicapped. I am not- I was gonna say, you are neither of those things. Not disabled, nothing. I can work just like you, and I have a job, and I am working, and there's no- Amber had a good point. 
Just because she was overweight didn't mean she couldn't do the job as well as anyone else. Bigger people could do things just as well as everybody else in the world. Now that I'm oh, look, I've seen some pretty big dudes skateboard. So, uh, you know, that guy, that guy was not good at it. But uh, I've seen some pretty big dudes. Hell, uh, a beast to beast even said he used to skateboard when he was at his biggest. So Amber had a job. It meant she couldn't vlog. Why isn't she wearing scrubs? Like she's not wearing scrubs here either. Did she just never buy scrubs? And the company let her get away with it? As much as she wanted, right? A resident, shh, stop. We're at work. <laughs> Anyways, I just wanted to say hi, like. There's a face. She's not wearing scrubs. Maybe. She's not that big. Why couldn't she wear scrubs, I wonder? I wonder if there's ever an explanation for that. Or if anybody ever really noticed besides me. Because I'm so observant, you guys. I, I just wonder why she never bought scrubs to wear. They're not that expensive. They're not any more expensive than normal clothes. I wish I could vlog more and I just don't vlog enough. Um, my resident's getting out of the shower now. She was in the woman's room doing that? Oh yeah, my feet are definitely tired. Good night. Okay. Look at how annoyed she is. This is interesting. Um, I knew that she had filmed while she worked here because I remember her filming one of her co-workers who hated it, and Amber continued to film her anyway. We've already established that Amber doesn't have boundaries, and she doesn't care about your boundaries. If she wants to film, she's going to film. Oh, good lord, this is getting long. Anyway, this is this is interesting. This is not something I've seen before, is her um, being this irritated with her residence because she's filming at work. Also, that was she in that woman's room filming? Like... Ma'am, how did she not get fired? I guess they don't, like, monitor, monitor her. I'm sure she didn't tell them that she had a YouTube channel and her boss was watching it or something. I don't know. Just, but I feel like if her coworkers had mentioned it to the boss that that probably would have been grounds for at least discipline, but I don't know. Amber filming herself at work and in other people's rooms felt very strange, like an invasion of privacy. Also, why are you filming this part? Who gives a shit that you're putting your hair up? Privacy. It didn't seem like she had asked permission to film in there either. And considering Amber told us she was going to really try at this job, this was not the best start she could have had. Hey, there was one point when I lost 89 pounds and I've officially gained it all back. I weigh 422 pounds as of today. All right, actually, we're going to pause here. I was trying to do this in two parts, but it looks like this might be a three-parter. Anyway, sorry, I talked too much. All right, let's um, let's pause here, and because it sounds like the story is getting ready to shift a little bit, it's a good place to like jump topics. Uh, if you guys have made it this far in the video, your emoji is of course a snowflake or a snowman or a snowwoman, as you will. Um, go ahead and leave that down in the comment section down below. Let me know what you guys think up to this point. Uh, feel free to fill me in on any of the details that I was missing out on. Like, why isn't she wearing scrubs? I'm confused about that. Uh, did Destiny live... Who did Destiny live with before they moved in with Amber and the roommate? Like, help me out here a little bit. I'm having holes in my memory. I'm going to be taking notes from here on out, though, so hopefully I will remember these things. And, yeah. So... Yes. Thank you to everybody who's been supporting the channel. Thank you to my subscribers. Thank you to my members. You guys rock. Thank you to everyone who's going to hit the thumbs up button. And if you've made it this far, you may as well subscribe because you've stuck around for almost an hour. <laughs> so I will see everybody in the next part of this. I promise you we will make this a three-parter. We will not go further than that or else I will just sit here and re-record. I promise you that much. Anyway, I will see you guys in the next part. Bye. This is my outro music. 
You can't copyright strike me because it's just me singing. This is my outro music. Thank you for watching. See you next time.